Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go through the steps of making a seal in instruction, which is pretty much where you have a start stop button that controls a motor output. But in addition to that, it is a great example to go through to help you understand how a PLC scans. We're going to be using our same MicroLogix trainer that we've been using for the past few. It's still wired for the getting started guide. We're going to go fast through how to create programs, how to download programs, because we have videos for all those and I'll put links to those in the description. So to start with, we're going to create a new program in RS Logix. We'll just call it SEAL. And we are working with a MicroLogix 1100-1763 Series B. And we're going to configure our channel configuration because we're going over Ethernet. This PLC is already configured for 192, 168, 110 with a subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0. Again, if you're not following that, I'll put a link to a video down below that shows exactly what we're doing. If you're using one of our trainers that has analog, don't forget to put in your uh, 1762 IF2 OF2. This is our basic trainer, so we're not going to use it for that. And we're going to use our green button for our start button. So we're going to put an XIC, and it's going to be I colon zero backslash zero. And we'll go ahead and call that our start button. And for now, we're just going to light up the green light with it. So I'm going to use an OTE instruction and I'm going to put O colon zero back plus zero. And that is our green light. And now we'll use our red button for our stop button. So we're going to add another rung. And we look at I colon zero backslash two because it is wired to this red button. And let's turn on the red light. So O colon zero backslash two is our red light. All right, so these two right here, we've already pretty much learned. Now we're going to make our seal in and we're going to use our blue light for it. We're going to use the same red and green buttons. We're going to do an XIC of I colon zero backslash zero. Now this may be the first lesson that we've actually looked at an input twice. Uh, there are some people out there that think that you need to copy it to another bit before you look at it. It doesn't matter. It does not tax the processor anymore. The XIC says go look for a one. It does not care where it's looking at, whether it's looking in a B3 data table or an input data table, they're all just data points to it. And we're going to do an OTE and we're going to do it to O colon zero backslash three, which is our blue light. So we'll just put blue light. And now we're going to do a branch instruction. So we're going to go back to the beginning of this rung. Make sure it's highlighted red right here. And right beside the add rung, we have rung branch. Click it. And then you see that it's kind of highlighted on this right side. Well, that allows you to click it here and you can drag it. So we could drag over this whole thing, but in our case, we're going to drag it to right here. And that makes it come around that start button. So down here, we're going to use an XIC over a red button. So that'll be I colon zero backslash two. And now we're going to look at an output instruction. Again, an XIC or an XIO, they don't care if they're looking at inputs, outputs, timer bits, B3 bits. All they're doing is they're just looking for ones and zeros. So we're going to put an XIO instruction. And now we're going to look at O colon zero backslash three, which is the blue light that we're controlling here. And let's verify it and go ahead and download it. Again, I'm not going to go through how to download it because we have videos for that. I'll put them down in the description. Now we're online. And so we're just going to press our green button. And you can see, I'm going to hold it in. I'm holding it in right now. And you can see I colon zero backslash zero. It says go look for a one. We go over here. I colon zero, zero backslash zero has a one. So it's true. So the OT is going to execute with true condition so it says go write a one to o colon zero backslash zero now i have a video where i go through this if you're kind of not familiar with this concept i'll put a link to it also in the description 
And also on rung two, you can see that we also, our blue light is on. Now I'm going to let off of this button. We're not going to go through this again yet, but I'm going to let off of this button. And now you see the first, our green light went out, but our blue light stayed on. And that is because of this lower branch right here is keeping it sealed in. Our, now we're going to press our red button. See, when I press it, you can see when our red light came on. I just did that so you could see that the buttons were being pressed. But also notice our blue light went out. So when I let off, the red light goes out, but the blue light didn't come back on. Now let's take a deeper dive and use this to really understand how a PLC scans and exactly what it is doing. So let's ignore rung one and two for now. In fact, let, let's just go ahead and take these rungs out. That way you fully understand that they're not doing anything. So let's highlight these two rungs and hit the delete key. And you can see they're highlighted, they show delete. And now let's go right here. We're gonna test these edits and then we'll assemble these edits. Now we haven't gone through the details of online editing, although now I think we've done it in four or five videos. But right now, just follow me through that, and now you should have this one single rung. And let's walk through the steps that it actually goes through. First, PLC is scanning constantly. I mean, it's probably scanning 200 times a second, maybe. And each time it comes around, it goes to the first instruction to the left on the top row. And this one is an XIC instruction, which says, go look for a one, where an I colon zero backslash zero. Now, if you're not sure how to navigate to it, you can right click right here and you can go to data table. And there it is. It says, do I have a one? Well, no, I have a zero right here. Now, so it is going to say it's false. Now, remember, and this is where it really becomes important, is that just because an instruction is false doesn't mean it doesn't do anything. It means it is going to have a false coming out of this instruction. But then it gets to this branch right here. It's gonna to get to the top there. It's gonna enter this branch. What this branch means is go back to the beginning and go to the next level. So it's gonna come back right here. So it does not go from this start button to this output. Because you'll hear a lot of people say, well, yeah, it, it is off. So the output turned off, but then the next one turned it on, so it's chattering. It is not chattering. It goes from the start button, it sees this branch right here, and it goes back to right here. And this says, go look for a zero. It doesn't care whether it's connected to a normally open, normally closed, it's an XIO instruction that says, go look for a zero, where an I colon zero backslash two. So we'll go to it, and it says, I have a zero. So this instruction is true. And it passes true to the next instruction. This one is saying, go look for a one. Where? An O colon zero backslash three. Go to it. You see we have a zero. So this is false. So now it comes back to this branch right here. And it says, well, were any of them true? If you remember the start right here was false. And now this branch right here is false. So this one's false. This one's false. So it's going to go to this OTE with false conditions. And an OTE that is false, remember, it does something. It says, go write a zero. Where? An O colon zero backslash three. Now remember, every time that it comes around to this program, it goes and writes a zero. It has a zero there. It still writes another zero over top of it. And we're actually going to use a feature of RS Logics that I have never found a use for until this video. So one, don't go out thinking you're going to test machines with this feature. But what we're going to do is we're going to go here to where we see remote run, click the down arrow beside of it, and we're going to click test single. And what this is going to do is it's going to make this PLC only run one scan. So I'm going to click go single scan. And you see over here, now it's saying test single. So now what we can do is we can go through the scan by scan and just kind of slow down for a second what exactly is going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the start button. Now first, as you see, when I sit here and press this button, nothing's happening in the PLC. 
And that is because of this test single scan function. So if I hit test single scan, it's going to go through a full scan, which includes reading inputs, updating input data tables, executing code, and updating its output. I'm going to press this button and then I'm going to click go single scan. And you can see that it went through a scan. Now I'm going to let go of this button. Now the PLC doesn't know I have, but mainly my finger will get sore if I don't while I'm talking to you. So we're going to go through exactly what it just did. So first step, which I kind of skipped on the first round through this, is the first thing it did is it went and read its physical inputs. And so button one is connected to I colon zero slash zero. And it said, I have current. So it goes here and it wrote a one to that input. And it went through all the rest of these. In fact, you can see, oh, there you go. Switch one was also on. And so it wrote a one to it. Then it started executing its code. And it's this, it had this XIC. It said, go look for a one where an I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? Yes. So it is true. Now, just because it's true doesn't mean it moves right over here to the blue light. It's still going to get to this branch, come back up, and it's going to scan this one. Now, I'm going to do a little something here because now it's not quite true. And I want to make sure that we fully understand what happened. Is at the beginning of this scan, this output was a zero. It was not on. So I am going to toggle this bit. Because this is really what it looked like at that moment of the scan. So it's, it was true here. It came up here and it got to the red button. The red button has an XIO. It said, go look for a zero. Where? An I colon zero backslash two. Do I have a zero? Yes. So it is true. It takes us true and it moves to the next instruction to the right, which is an XIO. And it says, go look for a one. Where? and O colon zero backslash three. Now it's so very important, even now that you realize that it's not going and looking at this OT. It's also not going and looking at this physical output. It is going to look at the data table. And right there, you can always right click them and say, go to data table. And that's exactly where it's looking. And it does not have a one, so it is false. So our lower branch here was true. Our top branch was false. Well, on a branch, if you have a true in any of them, then your result is true. And so it passed a true on to the OTE. Now this OTE ex executes whether it's true or false, it still executes every time. This time though, it's true. So it says, go write a one where and O colon zero backslash three. Now again, it is writing to this data table address. It is not writing this physical output. So it went and wrote a one. And at that point, then our rung looked like it does now. Then it keeps coming around to the next rung. It sees this end statement. And at that point, it goes and updates its outputs, which included turning on the blue light because O colon zero backslash three was on. Now remember, in the PLC, since we're doing this single step, it still thinks my finger's on it. So I'm going to do another single step with my finger on it. And you see nothing really changed. Now it did the exact same scans we just did. So now I'm going to let off of the button and we're going to do another single scan. So what happened there? First thing, at the beginning of the scan, it went and it read its inputs, including, mainly we're going to focus on this button right here, our green button, which was connected to I colon zero backslash zero. And now it does not have current because this, I've let go of the switch, so it wrote a zero to the data table. Then it went and began executing its code. So our first instruction was an XIC, said go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? No, I have a zero. So it says false. It gets to its branch here and it goes back to the next level of its branch and it sees an XIO instruction. The XIO says go look for a zero. Where? In I colon zero backslash two. Do I have a zero? 
Yes. So it is true. Now the XIC here says go look for a one. Now again, it is not looking at this blue light. It is not looking at this OTE over here. It says go look for a one in O colon zero backslash three. Do I have a one? Yes. So it is true. So our top branch was false, but our bottom branch was true. So it's going to pass true on to this OTE. So since the OTE is true going in, it says go write a one. Where? An O colon zero backslash three. And that is why our blue light has stayed on even after I've let off the button. Now again, remember we're doing the single step thing and guys, besides this video, I have never seen a use for the single step function. So don't go out there doing this normally. So now I'm gonna put my finger on the button. Actually, let's go ahead and hit the single scan button again, just so you can see that, yeah, all right, we scanned, nothing happened. So now I'm gonna put my finger on the stop button and I'm gonna press single scan again. Now I can let off the button because it's finished its scan. But what did it do? First it went and read all its inputs. It said, do I have current on each one of those? Now, it doesn't matter if it's a red button, if it's labeled stop or what it is, all the physical inputs are gonna do is say, do I have current? Since I had the red button pressed in, I had current. And that's why if you go over here to the input data table, I colon zero backslash two is a one. So now it goes and it runs, it executes its code again. It says, the XIC says, go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? No. So this instruction is false. It gets to the end of its branch and it goes to the next level. And it looks at the red button and it says, go look for a zero. Where? An I colon zero backslash two. Do I have a zero? No. So it is false. Now, even though it's false here, it still continues to the next instruction. And the XIC here is saying, go look for a one. Now, remember, this light was on at the beginning. So while it's showing off now, when it was going through this part of the instruction, it had a one in it. So it says, go look for one. Where? and O colon zero backslash three. We go to the element, do we have a one? Yes. So this is true at this moment in the PLC scan. So again, this one was false. This one was true. So it has to have a continuous line of true statements from left to the right to be true. So our top rung is false because of this one. Our bottom rung is, rung is false because of this one. So it continues over to the OTE with false conditions. And a false OTE says, go write a zero. Where? At O colon zero backslash three. It wrote at zero, and that is how it ended up looking like this. Then it goes and updates its outputs based off of that data table. So the PLC then goes to this data table right here. It updates its outputs, which included turning off the blue light. So easy takeaway from this one is obviously now you know how to do a CLM, but the more important takeaway here is really starting to understand those steps the PLC took for that CLM rung to work. Also, there's going to be some people that say, hey, Tim, you made a mistake. You put a stop button as a normally open output. Again, a PLC does not care. It does not care if it's connected to a normally open, normally closed, whatever. All the PLC program is saying is go look for a one, go look for a zero, go write a one, go write a zero. And in a video coming up, I'm actually going to go through some of the pitfalls of having a normally closed stop button and why it may or may not be a good idea for you. Till next time.